back to the 20 and 20. Take two, we're in the 15th and Ronnie's month today and there's a chance we might be taking what is reported to be the largest balloon in the world. I don't believe that, but we might be going up to see one of the most unique views of Paris in this guy today. If you're not familiar with the 20 and 20, it's where I do all 20 of Ronnie's months in 20 videos. Last time I did it in 20 days. This time I'm trying not to die, uh, so I'm gonna do it in 20 weeks. And if you wanna come along, we're gonna go see some really fun stuff to do in the 15th Arrondis Mont of Paris today. A very large Arrondis Mont, up and coming, lots of fun stuff to do. And the first thing we should probably do before we even try to approach this thing is coffee. Also, if these videos are coming out a little bit too slowly for you and you're like, come on, speed it up. I need to get to the Arrondis Mont that I'm gonna actually go visit while I'm here. ParisInMyPocket.com, go grab my guide right now. It has all my recommendations in it. Four times as many as we're gonna be giving away for free in all these videos. Uh, it's worth it. It's getting better all the time. We're making huge improvements. I am so excited for it. So pressmypocket.com, go grab that right now. And you can skip ahead to whatever around his mind you're looking for. But right now, we're in the 15th. Again, coffee. We've got to start with some classics too, because we don't have to try everything new as we go. And good news is ultimately, oh gee, it's classic. Like I've been coming here forever, Re recommending people come here forever. If you're in the 15th, I'm really refraining from saying, why would you be in the 15th? Because obviously we're going to show you a lot of good reasons to be in the 15th, but this is a delightful neighborhood spot that's going to get you a really good brunch, an amazing cup of coffee, some tasty cookies. And yeah, I just love this place. It's really great. From here, once we're properly caffeinated and we're high enough on like the cognitive level, we're gonna get even higher on the physical level. You'll see in a second, let's go to the balloon. This balloon, as amazing as it is, it provides one of the most unique views of the city. After multiple attempts, I finally made it up here. It's been uh, obviously with uh, scheduling, it's not always easy. So make sure you go to the website. It'll look like this if you can go up. It'll look like this most of the time when you can't go up. Big red bar, trust it. But clearly one of the most unique views of the city. Honestly, there's not really a way to get up to this height in Paris in a way that is as interesting, fun, generally. I mean, where else are you gonna get a shot of the Eiffel Tower in front of Sacre Coeur? Nowhere, that's where, except on the river, but that's a ground level and anyone can do that. I think they give you about 10 to 15 minutes up here, which feels really quick when you're trying to get a lot of shots, like I've done in the past, and we're headed down right now. You know, feels stable, even if it tilts a little bit here and there in the wind. Kind of tranquil. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's way out of the way, but it, it was worth it. Just a reminder that everything randomly closes here in Paris. It's just a persistent problem that we have here. You never know if the thing's gonna be open or not. Nobody's gonna tell you. So maybe come with a backup plan just in case this doesn't work out, you know. Go get coffee where we got coffee. Go get lunch where we're getting lunch. Or maybe try something else. There's some beautiful parks around here, some lovely walks along the river. They'll make it work, don't you worry. This is a terrible backup idea if the balloon doesn't go up. However, you may have noticed that Amy's been hanging out with us for the last hour. And if you'd like to go get a really good photographer on your trip, whether that's for shots in front of a monument, at a cafe, a bar, then My Paris Portraits is the place to go. You can follow them below. You can go to myparisportraits.com. They're really fun, they're lovely. They'll help you to feel really comfortable in front of the camera. And they've been taking photos with me for like the last five years. Yeah. Second time we've worked together. Amy's great. Third. Is it the third? It is the third. Wow. There's a link below. There's a link in the description below to, for my Paris Porches. Go click on that, please. Or you can, of course, follow them on Instagram and go directly to their website. Just book a time with them. Get your photos, whether that's family, individual, whatever portraits you're looking for, some action shots on your bike, a balloon ride that may or may not happen. It'll be a lot of fun. Silent Amy. Hello. Quiet. Goodbye. <laughs> she does speak. <laughs> The 15th may not have a lot of monuments in it, but does have a couple of things, including one really famous item that I will include at the end of the video. But if you want some shots at the Eiffel Tower, remember, a lot of the best shots are from the Arrondis Monts around the Eiffel Tower. And there are some really cool locations over here that are gonna get you some really interesting framing for your photos of the Eiffel Tower uh, that are gonna be way, way more interesting, more unique, and I, I just think cooler than Trocadero in the 16th. Skip Trocadero. Trocadero is obviously easy, low-hanging fruit, beautiful, worth it. But you could skip it, and if you feel like wandering around exploring and finding some nice long avenues, you'll find the Eiffel Tower is framed by the buildings of the 15th. The 15th is known for its skyscrapers. That's how you know you're in. I mean, it's one of the ways you can know. Look at these, like this red one. 15th. Okay, I want to, I've been wanting to try this place for a really long time. It's been on my list, and this is what I was going to explore today. But it's closed because it's Paris. It's also Ascension Day. 
it's a holiday. I, I don't keep track of the bank holidays because I work for myself. I don't know, do I get holidays? What day of the week is it? I never know. I do know though that it is lunchtime because I'm very hungry and this is where I wanted to eat. But we'll try it again one of these days and I'll share it with you if it's good. In the meantime, while we were biking over here, we biked by something that smelled delicious and looked ridiculous. It's called <laughs> We'll find out. Let's go find out. Well, the 15th might not be known for much. One of the things that I really like about it is the mishmash of architectural styles. You get a whole lot of different things from what feels like Osmanian to modern and a mishmash in between that leads to a lot of really nice, quiet neighborhood streets. It's very residential, lots of trees. Also, one of the alternatives, a great spot for lunch, just popped up here on the right. Just happened to be going by it. And uh, I'll just leave that to you to find in my guide. We've already been to it once in this series, so you know, it has a few locations around town and it'll come through for you if you're in a pinch. But yeah, I like this neighborhood. It's very, it just feels nice and quiet and it, I, I could definitely explore this a little bit more. There's gotta be some good stuff to find. I'm really conflicted by this because it is kind of tasty, but this place, when we first walked in, we thought we have hit the gold mine because it's a Korean barbecue place that is full of Koreans. Like they almost didn't have room for us. They were stressed out trying to find the space for us. And then we noticed they're all eating escargot. And like, is that beef burger? Neon? Turns out it's a bunch of Korean tourists that are coming here in massive tour groups that I don't know what the connection is, but they're eating French food instead. Uh, the Korean offerings have been, they came out in the weirdest order possible, let's just put it that way. And they're, they're tasty, but I wouldn't come back here uh, exactly. And, and I wouldn't want to send you somewhere that I wouldn't come back to. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave this one out. However, thankfully, if you get my guide at parismypocket.com, I have a beautifully formatted PDF here that'll jump around, around his month by around his month, giving you my recommendations for everywhere. To be honest, I don't have a whole lot of recommendations this deep in the 15th. I was hoping that we'd be finding a new one right now. That's not to say I have none. It's some good coffee and a couple of good spots to go. But if you find yourself kind of lost and in a sea of Korean tourists who are eating escargot, then you might want to find somewhere else to go. I got your back on that. ParisMyPocket.com, go grab it. We're just going to go ahead and call the 15th a loss on lunch for this video. Let's go get coffee. Well, I suppose you could say this is what I get for trying to film on a national holiday. I don't make plans based on real calendars, just the calendar in my head. And it's biting me in the butt because my afternoon coffee option is unfortunately tray closed. Ambition or Ambition Coffee Roasters run by uh, Juan, a buddy who's been roasting coffee for a while. His coffee's very good. You'll find it in a variety of coffee shops around town. So keep an eye out for it. His spot here in the 15th, not far from a little park where you could take it to have a nice little sip if you happen to be in the area. They were on my old 15 for five guide for coffee roasters and coffee shops and they're very good and I'm kind of sad that he's not here today. I made a mistake, one among many, but you know, that's okay. It's been a day full of mistakes. But while we're here suffering from a lack of coffee, I've got a patron who loves coffee, Paul, Dutch Paul. We're just gonna go with Dutch Paul, Paul C. He's a very recent patron, but he's one of my oldest supporters. He's been around forever and he never got on Patreon for a long time. He supported me in other ways. Like he gave me one of my first drones. I think it was my second drum. I lost it in Carcassonne. It was worth the accident. It was really some phenomenal footage. Uh, he sent me to VidCon back when I couldn't afford to go to Amsterdam on my own. He bought some art. He's been very, very supportive. He loves coffee as all good Dutch men do. Anyways, Paul, thank you. And thanks to all my patrons for making this possible. Let's get on, let's get on out of here. So let's go, I don't know, to a museum? Is the museum next? I'm at the Bordel Museum. My friend Amber, who happens to be a tour guide and a lover of random museums. I think it's an addiction of hers to go to new museums, see what's going on in Paris, and she has a surprising, well, not that surprising if you know her, but a shocking amount of information locked away in this head. Yeah, this is his most famous piece. Do you, can, do you have anything you can say about it? So uh, this is Hercules, and it's his most famous piece. It was used um, on children's textbooks, I think they used this. So loads of French people are yeah. really familiar with it. So it's obviously, it's Hercules during one of his um, 12 labors when he had to shoot little um, birds. It's a really like fascinating piece. He like persuaded this dude to model for him who was like a um, in the army and then the guy didn't want his face to be used because he didn't want people to recognize him so he ended up like changing his face for like a, a kouros you know it's those old greek sculptures you know so it's a lot more sort of 
uh, featureless, you know, godlike even. So it's kind of this like really powerful piece and he does it first in plaster and here in the museum they've got it in plaster and in bronze. And then it's really nice to compare them because they are different, they're different beasts, you know, depending on the material used. She's not only hilarious and witty, but she also has a lot of insight. One of the insights, I thought you just gave a really, really great tip because this museum is not only full of his amazing sculptures, I am shocked. Like I knew about this place, but I never knew about this place but the sheer amount of park in here, like the gardens. It's just such a beautiful, calm space and so lovely with all the sculptures all around. I mean, you can just come in just to get, you know, just to take a break, just to get out of the hustle and bustle. It's kind of like a sort of park, secret little park. Because it's a free museum. Free museum, yeah. So there is a paid exhibition going on, or exposition, exhibition? Expo. Okay, it's a paid <laughs> expo uh, that you can go to right now, but then there's also the free version, and it's, it's actually a really good point that if you wanted to come here and get out of the hustle and bustle of the Montparnasse area in particular, you happen to be in the neighborhood, just wander in, take a bench, enjoy the sculptures, the garden, and just chill in the shade. It's really, really nice. She's already here. When we first walked in here, the, the initial entrance, obviously the giant horse's butt in your face is definitely, it makes an impression with Montparnasse behind it, but I was definitely a little bit underwhelmed until we walked through and it just progressively blew my mind mm. because there's so much space here and I'm so thoroughly jealous that I want to have a creative space like this. I'm really impressed. Yeah. I think it's amazing. I agree, like I came in and I was like, oh, this is very pleasant. Yeah. But actually, it keeps surprising you. Yes. It's got lots of little doors and entrances and spaces, and it's sort of simultaneously small mm -hmm. and monumental. I definitely would recommend this. This is a really nice museum. How did I not know about this sooner? This is a good find. I'm glad we came. Yeah, me too. Make sure you follow her and of course, reach out if you want a little bit of a hilarious but also very insightful <laughs> tour through any museum. I don't know about any museum. I mean, most of the museums. Most of the museums. <laughs> Amber's gonna have you covered. <laughs> 15th is also home to the largest of all the Statues of Liberty in town. If you happen to be into that sort of thing, I think there are five in town. It's always hard to keep track. This has been Paris in My Pockets Guide to the 15th. It has been quite the cluster, filled with its own challenges as we've gone along, but such is life in Paris, and it's always good to have an alternate route on hand when you're doing anything in this city because you never know when things are just gonna shut down on you. But I, 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 will, give, I will give credit to the city that the, um, you know, doing this on Ascension Day was probably not the smartest of ideas. Thanks to all my patrons for making this possible, of course to you for watching. And don't forget to go to parismypocket.com to grab my guide. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's gonna make your time better in Paris, guaranteed. parismypocket.com. I gotta get out of the way of all these people.